Still good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm really excited, you know, uh, to be in Mokchung. Um, and I've been to Mokchung, this is my fourth time. But never had a chance to mingle with the locals like this. So it's a great privilege to be in the land of pioneers. And we all know that this is a land of pioneers, right? Yeah. Why was that? I mean, why is that? We all know the reason. Christianity came here in 1872, and you have just celebrated 150 years. Um, there is a specific name for that, which is very long and difficult to pronounce. Anyway, let's leave that aside. I heard that Mohokchung was given once the name called Land of Fashion, and people didn't like it. <laughs> so oh, no, we don't want we don't want to be that cheap, you know. After you know having a thorough consideration, people thought out the best and some a name that is suited the best to this uh, district, which is a land of pioneers. So I know that this is a crusaders group, which is uh, 25 years and above. So it's a, it's a good group of people to have a conversation like this. I know we'll get into that topic one at a time. And before we go into other things, um, I was really blessed by Temsa's message, and that's a very thought-provoking message, and that's the kind of message that we need in our society today. Because we become different when we go to church, and we become different when we go out of it. And you see that every day, and I see that every day. And I've worked with the government, and imagine, imagine all the bad things happening in Nagaland, and all the people you think bad or corrupt, they are all devoted member of a church. So that's how we become clean. So our church is a washing machine, you know? When you get into it, you got yourself clean, and when you get out of it, it doesn't matter anymore. Thanks for that message. And the singer, I forgot his name, such a great voice. I enjoyed his like melody, okay. I wish you put up that on YouTube and make yourself like talents known to the world. So thanks for that. I really appreciate it. And thanks, Naro and team, for inviting me here. Um, Temso and we were talking, like, and Naro, we were all talking. When there is a repetitive continuation of talks and speaker from the same community, same place, same genre, we get tired of it. Like, we're tired of not pork. We're not tired of pork. We're tired of, like, one specific cuisines that we would eat every single day. We get tired of it, isn't it? So I may not be the best cuisine today, but after you eat dal for so long or meat for so long, let me be a small chutney, you know, very refreshing. <laughs> it's not the best, but having bringing some perspective from outside of your community and outside of uh, the narrative that you have in Mohokchung district. I look to your community with respect. I mean, I look at your community with respect. Yes, and I have traveled to many districts in Nagaland. We go to many districts. And when people from Mokchung receive us, there is something different about this place and these people. Okay? So those are com good compliments that I'm trying to give so that I can be safe when I speak bad things about later. <laughs> so that is what I want to let you all know as well. Um, before I came here, there was some friends who were talking about like our people. They're known for us. some few things. Like every our family would have scooter, bajaj scooter, you know. I don't know if you have here in Mojong. <laughs> That's what people told me. And Tamil is there, you know, like food. You know, I don't know how true it is. Um, yes. So we all have our identity, right? Everyone has identity. Every tribe, every community, every group of people has identity. <laughs> so it, it is also a responsibility how we want to project ourselves. To the world as our identity trying to explain or trying to say things on how our social life we should build upon our social life and build a better identity as a social group is something that i am interested in so yeah your first identity comes as a land of pioneers that may be because you started christianity here in nagaland and probably from 1872 to um late 19th century because of that activity you're given the name land of pioneers but after that 
what kind of name now are we getting? Are our, our, our community getting? It's a big question all of us have to answer. I mean, all of us have to ponder upon. So the name, the, that, that prestige name was given and is still given because of our great, great grandfathers or our fathers. Now, as a youth, what kind of identity you want to develop in front of other tribes or in front of the world? Land of Pioneers was given not because of you all, not because of you all, that's the fact. It's because of someone has done the work way ahead of like other people, the good works, the good deeds. Now, your job is something different. Without enjoying the past glory, maybe you might have to start thinking about thinking ahead of others and still be the pioneers from our generation, from your generation. Um, there is a poem called Ozymandias, I mean, a poem about, you know, being, you know, glorifying the past. And that talks about like our passes, we have a past glory, past glory. Um, but when our future generation and our present generation, when we look at it, are we as glorified as our past? Is something maybe we can ponder upon. Now, ageism, like it's a very new topic for me. Honestly, when Naro gave me, I have heard of it, but I haven't really, I had not really given a serious thought about ageism. So like all ism, tribalism, racism, we know tribalism like it's um, judging someone based on his tribe and taking action based on his tribe. It's called tribalism. So like all other ism, like racism, judging and discriminating or taking action someone based on his or her race, his or her color. So those are all part of it. It refers to a stereotypes Stereotypes means how we think about certain things and prejudice means how we feel and discrimination means like how we act upon it based on you know towards others or oneself based on age right so when any form of ism consists of three things the first is stereotypes which is how we think Second is prejudice, how we feel. And the third is discrimination, which is um, how we act upon others and ourselves. So now, when you see someone of certain age, so this is about not, you know, ageism or discrimination against others, it's against yourself as well. Sometimes when I consider okay, myself, like, in, to be in public platform like this, Sometimes I discriminate myself. I have my own prejudice against myself. I have my own discrimination and I have my own stereotypes against myself because of my age. Uh, my face does not cooperate with my age. The root cause of all this ism is about yourself against others and yourself. And when I stand in public, I would feel, no, how can I preach? How can I speak as a speaker in front of elderly people? So from then on, I start you know, judging myself. So ageism refers not only to discrimination against all people. It refers to discrimination against anyone based on age. It may be discrimination against younger people. Younger people. So you, everyone is a victim of ageism here, okay? But it's not a deadly victim. It's not a violent victim. No, right? everyone agrees that somewhere or the other, someone has judged you based on your age, isn't it? And at the same time, all of us are a perpetrator of, perpetrator of ageism. We have acted one person or the other person based on his or her age. We have victimized some people. So like, it's a, someone said, okay, age is not the, age is a natural part of life. It's not the problem to be solved. Naro, you can't solve your age, right? <laughs> I can't solve my age. You can't, no one can solve his or her age. So something we need to accept. Let's accept ourselves today that whatever age I am in, it's not a disadvantage. Let's agree to that and take away from here that it's part of life and we have to accept and move on. The word ageism was coined by Dr. Robert Butler. 
uh, he was a psychiatric a psychiatrist and he was a gerontologist. So psychiatrist we know who deals with uh, mental health and all of this. Gerontologist we know it's someone who deals with age and adult life. Okay, they are called gerontologists, and the study of it is gerontology. So if anyone wants to take up a study on, you know, gerontology, maybe you might want to Google it and find out where to study that. <laughs> so when they started in 1969, they say that this movement started in the, in, in, the, in the rise of civil movement in the U.S. So when they started this, they were targeting against um, the discrimination over old age people. Okay, but the whole spectrum of ageism does not confine only the old age people. It confines everyone. It involves everyone, literally all of us. So it science says that as early as four years of age, children start adopting the culture's practice of ageism, the, the practice of ageism, unknowingly, subconsciously. So as early as four years of age. So let's say ours, your community have, let's say your community has a, certain way of respect towards elders. So a child as, you're, as, as, as young as four years of age would start adopting that. So it's a very wonderful thing, okay? When you look at it, how people pick it up, it's not ingrained in the natural life. It's just how we are influenced by culture. And it's also very important for us to think deeply on this and stop from here how we treat people based on his or her age, based on his or her appearance. Most difficult challenge that I normally face is meeting people and approaching people and asking them something. Because the moment they see me, they think I'm a high school boy, you know? So like, it's very challenging, okay? Um, I don't blame anyone, but that's the challenge sometimes I face. But once they give me chance to talk, we start talking, and from there they would start listening. So that's the experience that I normally face. But I cannot complain anyone about it. Um, you cannot complain anything about how you look, how you appear in front of others. But once you get a chance, how you present it should be your problem to think about. So that's something. So they said, okay, these people who started atheism, they said, as you are right now, so once was I. Okay. And as I am, so will you be. Are you getting me? As you are, so once was I. This is, imagine this statement spoken by like a grandpa here. Very old, 90 years old grandpa. And he would be saying, as you are, so once was I. And as I am, so will you be one day. So when we hear such statement, it makes us think, okay, so these are some very provoking thoughts that we all need to keep in mind. And this will not impact in our everyday life as such in a very big way but in a very subtle way in a very minute way it helps us build relationship when we are aware of how to treat people appropriately so the noun word for the concept is called ageism and people who practice ageism are called ageist just like for people who practice racism we call racist honestly when narok informed me about this topic like, I was thinking about they might give me some very, very hot topic. But she informed me about ageism. And it, it sounded, honestly, very trivial to me. But when I started giving a thought on it, it's an issue that we all have every, every single day. And every one of us is a victim. And every one of us is a perpetrator of that. So let's have that self-awareness. And stop judging people on what, how old they are and how young they are. You know why I brought this topic? We should stop. Because I, when I read the story in Bible, there's a story of atheism as well. Can anyone cite like an incident for incident where is the practice of atheism occurred? I think David. Yeah, I think everyone, David, the young boy, you know, who is underestimated by his stature, by his look, by his age. But you know what he did? The rest of the story becomes history. So this is a topic, this is an issue we hardly give a thought. And this is happening even, it's a stumbling bro block. And it's even um, obstructing our way, our relationship with God, and our relation, I mean, uh, towards the calling of God as well. Some people will say, I'm too young. 
I think even Moses said that, right? I'm too young for this. So this is one thing. And God doesn't see us. I'm not preaching gospel, but God doesn't, the Bible doesn't see, doesn't treat ageism um, in such a way that human beings treat w- with one another. The Bible is, I just got to learn that God is so complete that He knew about ageism and He doesn't treat human beings with based on age. And it is humans, it is we humans who created the idea and the practice of ageism. And that is in the case of a young David. Now let's look at the old human beings, how God treats all human beings. Can anyone set me an example? It may not be ageism being treated right there, but how God treats all people in a good way. Abraham, great example. And we know Sarah. Sarah was very old when she conceived Isaac, right? And like <laughs> our senior citizens, especially the ladies, must be getting a lot of comments. It's time for you to get married. <laughs> Otherwise, you won't have babies. <laughs> but God didn't say that. I was shocked when I learned this. Isn't it wonderful? I mean, God has something for us to learn, something new for us to learn every day. And this ageism, when you ref- just pick any topic, any issue in the world, and juxtapose yourself with what is written in the Bible, I think you may find some stories. And John, and John the Apostle, he was so old, I think, he, when he was in Patmos Island. But he wrote the, I mean, one of the best books, I would say. Sorry for saying that. But the most, how to say, dangerous book we all don't want to read, Revelation. We're, we all are scared to read. I mean, that's some sort of like, God doesn't see age. God doesn't see the appearance of the person. What matters is, I think, you know, with God, it's everything with your heart. And once we start pe- seeing people that way, I think our society will become much better. And that's how it is. So that is ageism. Okay, I, I'm sure, um, I, I, I have tried my best, but I'm sure I'm clear with what is ageism, which uh, we didn't give much thought before, right? Ageism is not always bad in a sense like um, when you judge a person, when you give a privilege to a person based on age, it's not always bad. So um, we are talk- still talking about the critic or the limitation or the disadvantage of ageism, but we can still look at it to some extent in a very good way. So our culture of respecting elder is a good thing. But once we over-respect, we start losing our voice. That becomes where the danger comes. By virtue of being an elder, even if they're wrong, we don't have a voice, okay? And Naga tribes are very, very customary in that sense. And you have to respect, you have to listen to your kampura, you have to listen to your, all of this. We have to, we have to respect. That's a good culture. But when we overdo it, we compromise with what is right and what is wrong. So like as a youth, right, I was talking to Naro, for Western countries, youth means like your guided group and um, crossroads group would be the perfect youth for them. But for Naga society, we developed a bit later. I mean, we're a bit slower, like a tube light. <laughs> so like for us, physically as well as mentally, this is a prime age for youth, as a youth. Because imagine the guided group and crossroads group having giving the responsibility of youth intellectually, and physically, I don't think they would be able to handle because intellectually, uh, people are not mature. That's, I mean, that's our society. So, this is the time God also, I think, wants us to really be strong and be courageous. And the, I will come back to the Bible again for the last time. Um, when Paul wrote to Timothy, First Timothy 4.12, do not let anyone look down on you just because you are young. But be an example in, in, in love, in faith, uh, in purity, and all of this, in your presentation, in your speech. God doesn't want us to discriminate ourselves because we are young. Meantime, God doesn't want us to discriminate ourselves because we are old, right? So, that is what ageism is. And from a little bit of biblical perspective, that's how we are viewing at it. I don't want to judge on this also. <laughs> it's okay. It's part of like part of the natural process. 
like just raise your hand if you feel that you have practiced or you have um let's say executed the practice of racism over not racism ageism over someone or the other knowingly or unknowingly for me i have done it okay i can see a few hands yeah because having that honestly that naga male ego okay when young people just like as as old, as young as um 15 16 years old when they come and like act over smart we can't see it like we can't tolerate that's my judgment upon them but if there is a small element of truth in what they are saying i think i should have the courage to listen to them to be able to accept what they're saying so that you are also accepted by the elders because when we imply that to ourselves we 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 feel that we are the victim but we are also victimizing other people as well a very small issue but if if we take care of this i'm sure our relationship with people will improve very immensely so that is something and i mean i i i had a chance to talk to one of your you know our political icon who is it dr s jamir yeah I heard about his name when I was in like class one two, and people would talk about when I was in class one two. You know, he was the, at his prime time as a politician and serving as the chief minister of Nagaland. And we heard about it like we heard about a story, a rumor like he, when he was born, he was put in a basket and hang in the, on the tree in that basket, and the snake would come and guard him. That's why he's so strong. <laughs> so we heard about his name. Do you guys do you guys know that? But <laughs> no, I know. Those are like class one, two students just talking inside the classroom, you know? Because you heard stories that he has been chief minister for so long, very powerful. I I thanked him. I mean, I appreciate him for entertaining me to talk to him about his service and his, cover, his policies and um, some of the things, political issues that is like we are concerned about in Nagaland or as a whole Naga political issue. And he's one of the, like, he's, he's one person who is deeply involved in that. For the sake of our conversation, he really warmly accepted me, like a 90 year old accepting, like, I mean, I'm just as old as one third of his age. And there's something to learn from him as well. Um, but our society have a, a tendency of saying like uh, he's just he's just a youth he's just a kid like don't take him seriously imagine you have your village council discussing something and as old as let's say the senior most here going and voicing out your own concern i don't think the village elders will give us much respect not because they hate us but that's how their mind and how their thought process is shaped by our culture now, my point is, as a land of pioneers, you should be a pioneer on this now. And you should, we should appreciate young people speaking. We should appreciate young people wanting to voice out. And you know what my biggest concern is? I have been, I've traveled, you know, around the world and I've traveled around the country. What I see is um, people creating opportunity for themselves to speak up here in the context of a Naga society even we are given opportunity no one wants to talk I don't blame you I don't blame myself I don't blame others it's our culture that has shaped us maybe it's time for us to start deconstructing this culture of like keeping ourselves mum great great grandfathers they have done their good job amazing job that's why I think relatively you all, you all are very, very blessed as a community. Individually, I don't know. But community, when it comes to community, you all are very blessed in such a way that you know, people look up to you for many things. Okay? And so be proud of that and continue living that way. And now pick up some more important things and be the pioneers again. Right? People who have been pioneers should always continue to be the pioneer because when you have a race 
if you are one kilometer away from me, regardless of how much I run, you will always be 100 kilometers. But the moment you give up thinking, I will overtake you. So he may be the, we have seen in Olympics, right? People running for race. The first one will be always leading, but the moment he slows down, other, other, other overtakes. Same as that. The moment you guys give up, you'll stop being the um, pioneers of 21st century. You are the pioneers of 18th, 19th century. So whether you want to dwell on your past glory or you want to even be proud of your future and be a community and group of people that can still lead the society, that's something I want to leave with you as well. I have not come here to give you new idea to teach you, but just to provoke you, okay, today, just to provoke you so that you can think and reflect yourself deep down.